the floor right now. There is something holding you up. If the chair disappeared, you would fall. If suddenly a hole appeared in the ground here, this box would fall. So there's gotta be something holding it up. That is the normal force. It's a, Hewitt I think refers to it as the support force. So there is a normal force pushing up on the box. It keeps the box from falling. And the box is also pushing down on the ground. If you walk in soft ground and you look back and you see your footprints, it's this force right here causing the footprints. Questions before I talk about rookie mistakes? The order in which I do this changes every semester, so there's not like it's rookie mistake number one is the same always, but I always hit the same things. Rookie mistake number one, putting force on source, not recipient. This weight right here is coming from the earth. This force right here is coming from the earth. It is acting on the box. So you're supposed to draw it on the receiver of that force. This weight down here is the force on the earth from the box. So the earth pulls down on the box. So I draw my arrow down on the box. The box pulls up on the earth. So I draw my arrow up on the earth. So the rookie mistake here would be to basically backwards. Mr. Yuck sticker next to it. Please don't. I'm bringing these up just because these are common mistakes, and hopefully by highlighting them, it, this is not the part you'll remember, except for the fact that, oh, I'm not going to do that. Okay, mistake number two no man's land. Way too many times I've seen this. Let's see, there's a force acting down on the box, the weight there, and I got a force acting up on the weight, and I got a normal force there, and I got a normal force there. I have no idea if this person knows what forces, which force is acting on which object. Forces have to act on an object. Forces aren't appearing in between. You really want to get pedantic. There is some particle mediating, there's a force mediator that is potentially between them, but that's not, the force does not happen in between. And sort of the opposite of, and sort of, uh, I guess the counter to that one, rookie mistake number three, not bothering to separate the diagram so everything gets crammed together. And as always, Questions up to here. Because you know the next one's going to be even more exciting. All right, here we go. Box on box on ground. And this one will actually have a direct connection to something I'm willing to bet most of you have done. Box on box on ground. Another draw. Box and box. I'll call that box one and box two.
So if you don't like box on box on ground, if you want something more visual, box on table on ground. Still work. All right, so the first thing I do, I draw my three, I got three objects here. I got the two boxes and I got the ground. And so I draw one, I draw them so I got some room to write my arrows. I personally recommend that you always draw it in roughly the same orientation as the original problem. That's why I drew one here, then two, and then the ground. Technically, you don't have to. I could draw two over here, and I could draw one over there, and then the ground's on the ceiling. But for me, it's just easier to keep track of it if I draw these in the same orientation as the original problem. All right, go to the checklist, F down. Is there anything we can automatically just get rid of? that we know is not involved. Friction. All right, so friction's gone. Other. Other's gone. Yep, and tension. So again, so just, just like that, got rid of 60% of the forces. All right, now, let's do weight first. Once you get used to it, weight's the simplest in my opinion. Is there any weight involved in this problem? Because yeah. I got a big old planet down there. What is the direction of the weight acting on mass on the box one? Down on box two. Two is acting on one. Okay, so down on box one. And what's the, they come in pairs. Where's the other one? It's coming up from two. Up from two? Yeah, from one. I mean up on two? So you would draw it like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, get picky about the prepositions at this point. It, the force is on, not from. This is the one that's from to, or not. So let's think about that. I haven't quite labeled it yet. That is, that, I, let's go ahead and say that is not correct. If box two suddenly disappeared, does the box one suddenly have no weight? What would happen to box one if box two suddenly disappeared? So what's causing this weight? Uh, more specific, what object? That's the other part. That's the pair. Weight is between the huge object and the small object. It does not require contact, as we did in the very first box falling. Now, if you've drawn an arrow up on two and you're writing it in ink, you don't have to erase it. We're, we're going to label it something else. There is a force acting up on two. Just not weight. All right, so there's a weight between one and the ground. Again, weight is always going to be object and planet or moon or whatever huge object thing you have. What about two? Is there a weight acting on two? Yes. Yeah. Acting which way? On two. On yeah. And then up on I think somebody just said it. The ground. Now there's a small mistake here that I would call rookie mistake number four, whatever we're up to, four. Doesn't require erasing anything. What is wrong with this picture? Oh. Uh, hopefully, you can tell which way my arrows are going. <laughs> we have to specify whether it's box one or box two. Do box one and box two weigh the same thing? No. I don't know. We have to somehow differentiate the Ws. If I don't put a, if I don't differentiate them, then we're saying they're the same. So, same magnitude. So however you wish to label them, just make sure that the pair associated with one is different than the pair associated with two. Now I'm gonna just take a huge leap here in, in uh, oh, I've lost the word. So, you know, if you're watching this video later, just sort of forget that last 30 seconds. I'm gonna, I generally like labeling with things that make sense to the problem. 
Since this is box one, I'm cleverly gonna put a one there and then a one down here. That's the pair associated with box one. And then box two, I'll put a two. Some students, regardless of what the object is, they'll, the first pair they do is one, the next pair is two, the next pair is three, and so on. Any questions about the weights? All right, I, sorry, I don't know if I took a long enough pause there for people to ask. All right, there is a force between, a gravitational force between one and two. It is not weight. Weight has to be with the planet or the moon or whatever huge object it is. The gravitational force between there, just sort of imagine you're sitting right here and just feeling that gravitational pull towards the clock or towards your table or towards the window. You feel yourself getting tugged in that direction. You find yourself difficult to leave the room because you're being pulled by the blinds. I'm trusting you're not. <laughs> the force between one and two is so incredibly tiny that we are going to ignore it. If you do want to worry about the force between one and two, because there's a gravitational force there, why not keep going? What about the gravitational force between the top part of box one and the bottom part of box one? You could keep going with that. We can split it into quarters. Or we can actually get down to the molecular level. This is the path to madness. Only bring in the generalized gravitational formula when you're talking about sun-planet kind of relationships, moon-planet. When you're talking about huge objects that are not near each other. All right, wait, done. Normal force? Okay, which way is it acting on one? And on two? And also, from what? Because of the ground. Okay, so we got this pair here, they're in contact, and we got this pair here, so I've got Oop, that is mislabeled there. That should be Y1. Somebody should have called me on that. Then Y2 there and Y2 here. Not putting in subscripts. We're eventually, we're heading towards a test level problem. There are some students who just don't bother with subscripts, and what I do is I generally give credit for the first one, and then there's the deduction for all the other ones. So on the ground, it's y1 going down and y1, y2 going down. I got, that's y2 on the ground. Sorry, are you saying that there should be another force here, or is there trouble reading my writing? No, I was having trouble reading. That, that's a two. Years ago, I had a student whose glasses broke right before the semester began. I'm not saying that's the issue there, but he did not have glasses until the last week of the semester. And throughout the entire semester, it was always a, I can't, I can't read that. I mean, he's squinting the entire time. I'm glad he finally got his glasses. All right. Now, let's actually relate this to something else. The topic's so controversial, someone's walking out. So 
person on scale on the ground. Let's do the force diagram, the person on the scale on the ground. Uh, we could have a person on the scale on the bathroom floor in a house that's on the ground, but let's just simplify it. You take the scale outside, you step on it. So I draw my three objects. Then we do a force diagram. So what's the force diagram look like? Or tell me a pair of forces that's involved here. All right, uh, first I heard, let's do weight and then we'll come back to Luis. Weight. Acting on? The scale. The Act, acting which way on the scale? Down. Okay, so I have weight. And so this is a case here, I'm gonna put a little S here for scale. And it comes in pairs, so where's the other pair part? Uh, on the ground up. On the ground. Oh. Okay. Again, this is the force from the ground. This is the force on the ground. Okay. Another pair of forces? Oh, that's right. Luis, you said friction? I was wrong. Oh. I thought that was a slope. I was wrong. Yeah, not supposed to be a slope there. <laughs> this little bit right here is just the so you can weaken the scale. Um, I just, I don't know, I feel like I heard you say before about the scale that it's not weight, it's the gravitational pull. Of what the scale reads? Yeah, like it's We're not. We're going to get to that. Yeah. Getting flashbacks? Yeah. All right. Another pair of forces. Let's get the force diagram part, and then I'm, then I'll we'll ask the question Would that you're getting to. This one have all the uh, exact same forces as that one on the left over there? It better. Yes, it does. So I got weight acting on the person, weight of person, and then the other part, weight of person. And then I got my pair of normal forces. So I got normal force on person, normal force on from the person on the scale. And then I got between scale and ground, Y, S, and Y, S. Now, if you have different subscripts that make sense to you, that's fine. This is just what I'm doing here. All right, so now the question is that Isabella was getting towards, what does the scale measure? When I step on a scale and it says 200 pounds, what is it telling me? I think somebody said something. Are you weighing 200 pounds? Uh, no, and if somebody just said mass. But can I overdo it again? Is it mass? No, it is not. It is not mass. Gravitational pull of your weight? Gravitational pull of your weight this day. Of your body to the center of the earth? Uh, no, that, that would be called the weight in this situation. I hope you're okay when I overdo it. I, I, I've had some students in the past where I just misread it completely and they... No, it's fine. Okay, thank you. All right, why it's not the weight? The weight of the person here, that's the force acting on the person. The other part of that pair is here. There is no weight from the person acting on the scale. What force is between the person and the scale? Somebody just said it. Normal. Yes. This. That is the force that the person exerts on the scale. How many of you have been on an analog scale and can remember it? Wow. One. Two. Three. How many people have stepped on an analog scale? Yeah, it's got the dial. Yeah. No. When you first step on it, does it immediately go to your weight? No. Yeah, it usually shoots past and comes back. That's because your normal force is changing. When you first step on it, the normal force is more than your weight because it's trying to stop you from falling. And then eventually you get to a point where it's in equilibrium. You get to a certain point when you're not accelerating anymore. You're just sitting, standing there. 
At that point, these two forces are equal in magnitude. So the normal force is equal to your weight in magnitude. But it's the normal force that a scale is actually measuring. If it were your weight, think about it from a, a dieting point of view. You step on a scale and suddenly you're like 400 pounds. And then you bounce a little bit and suddenly you're down to like 50 pounds. And then you're back to 400 and then 50 and then 400. That's a massive weight change. Or your weight's really not changing. It's just the normal force that's changing. Normal force is what a scale actually measures. We will pretend that it's the weight, and that's because it's the weight in, if, as long as you're in equilibrium. So let's bring up that word. It's supposed to be a U. A state or condition in which the total force is zero. If you add up all the forces and the forces add up to zero, in other words, if you're doing head to tail method and you end up back exactly where you started, that's equilibrium. Now, if this is true, and this was hinted at earlier by Aiden, I'll call you a different name, by Aiden, and this connection we'll get into more in chapter four, but if the total force is zero, then your acceleration is zero. Now, what acceleration exactly is, that's technically chapter three. And if acceleration is zero, that means your velocity is zero. Change in velocity, not your velocity. The change in velocity is zero. If any one of these is true, the other two are also true. So any one of these means that an object's in equilibrium. And again, I realize I just throw words at you. We'll flesh it out as we go. So the keep the weight or take it off of the diagram? 